everybody. Welcome back to the Wildland Farmstead podcast. It's been a minute, but we are back here recording another podcast. Hope everybody has been doing well. Um, today we're going to be talking about starting a garden and the various ways that you can do that. We're going to try to consider um, like affordability and approachability and the different ways that we discuss. We want to try to make it as easy on you as possible. Um, so we're just going to go through the different options that you have for starting a garden if it's your first year ever. Um, but first we're going to do a little bit of a farm update. And I guess I skipped the introduction. I'm Sarah. I'm Jared. And we have a little farmstead and wood shop here. And we talk about those things on this podcast. Um, and we try to approach most things that we do from a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I want to say easy to do, but that's not. (laughs) Um, Easy to do. (laughs) Permaculture. Yeah, yes. And and also not trying to do something that's complicated or expensive. Let me say overly complicated. Yeah. Or expensive. Very accessible. Yes. Um, You know, we started this this farm with, like, very little. (laughs) And we've grown it with, (laughs) with very little. So I guess that that's. That's sort of our mindset. Um, yeah, no debt. And, no debt. Yeah, no debt. No grants. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing yet, mm-hmm. but um, no mm-hmm. debt, no grants. We've just done the thing. So um, I guess that that's, that's on our mind to try and help other people be able to do that too. Yeah. Um, so we'll get on into the farm <coughs> updates. Yeah. What's been going on? Uh, yeah, so we have been planting a lot of tree seeds, mm-hmm. honey locusts, black locusts, persimmons, a lot of persimmons. Y'all need persimmon trees. Hit us up in the spring. A lot of persimmons, uh, apples, elderberry. What else did I start? Did we plant elderberry? I did, yeah, a lot of elderberry. Well, a lot of, we, we for, got a lot of wild elderberry. Yes, we got most of these seeds from... All the seeds we got locally. The persimmons are from the farm. The apples are from another. Wild persimmons that are growing on the farm, yeah. The apples are from another local farm. The um, black locusts, I think we stole that from a zoo. Are we like, <laughs> are we no, you're not allowed to say that. <laughs> no, the honey locusts. The honey locusts, we, we picked up somewhere <laughs> in the wild. <laughs> um, and the yeah. elderberry we foraged from, like, a fence row. Well, there's honey locust and black locust. Black locust okay. came from our farm. We start <laughs> we we got those from Akiba Silver at Twisted Tree a couple years back, and they started to produce. Okay. Um, yeah. Honey locust. <laughs> honey locust came from uh, some undisclosed location. <laughs> um, and then um, elderberry. What was the last one I forgot? Oh yeah, we got those like out of we on have, the side of railroad tracks. Yeah, some relatives who have a shop, and there was a fence row and railroad tracks, and they were just we discovered that they were just growing there, so we went and got a lot those. of elderberries. Yeah, um, wow, crazy. So Been growing there for years, my whole life, and, and I never knew they were there until we I was like, wait, we weren't tuned into those sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but why? Are, so why are we starting all these? trees oh for the farm just i mean basically in hopes of having a little nursery here on the farm but i mean we also need so many trees i mean we're cutting down a lot of trees we're clearing uh, that's one of the other updates we're clearing for to put in fence and to put in food forest but like we're taking out of a lot of low value Our- pencil thin trees cedar trees are our cedar trees cedar, forest cedar, when we got cedar. here was like filled with like scrub cedar yeah it's like tiny crazy cedar. thick couldn't, crazy. couldn't walk through it yeah so we're trying to couldn't fit your hand yeah. through it like it was that dense I've, I've never even seen it i'm growing like bamboo say that again it was almost growing like bamboo, growing like bamboo. yeah just so tight but yeah so we're trying to reduce that and and basically set up a food forest and area back there for our poultry we have chickens ducks geese yeah maybe we want to add some some sheep to that mix but we don't know about that yet or pigs um but that's further down the road yeah so we're starting trees for our food forest starting trees to just plant in our orchard area and maybe have a little nursery um this week we're building nursery beds 
we've built nursery beds. We did a little video about that over on the, the channel. Um, we were able to build them for like super low cost, like five to ten dollars a bed because we were able to get the untreated wood for free. And then we had the material to fill it with here. Um, screws, so we, that was really it. And yeah, the propane. Screws and the propane. So really, <laughs> it was like five to ten dollars. Um, so yeah. if you can score some free wood, you can build them for pretty, pretty low cost. And I go through all that in the video, like how much it costs us and how much it would cost you if you had to buy everything. It's still only like $70 a bed if you have to buy everything. So it's still something to consider. Yeah. Um, filling it, I guess, is the cost. But we'll get we'll get down to that later when we talk about different ways to start a garden. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, what else? What other farm updates do we have? Mm, forest clearing. I just feel like we're doing that forever because we're doing it by hand. Yeah, we 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 are doing it by hand. I guess that's significant. Yeah, I mean by hand, I mean chainsaw, but we're not bringing in like an excavator and like pushing or everything skid over or steer or any heavy equipment. Yeah, and burning it. You know, we're we're trying to build hedges, dead hedges. Yeah, dead hedges or and habitats. chipping up when we have too much for the dead hedge. Mm-hmm. Um, so and then we're trying to leave all the big trees that are there. There's like huge walnut tree. There's yeah, there's even some huge. smaller trees that are going to become. Really big trees like tulip poplar and a sassafras and several oak. a lot of yeah trying to leave the harder woods yeah so we're not just going back there and pushing everything over and, and, and some of the cedars that are decent size but it was just crazy thick I mean no sunlight was reaching the bottom of the forest floor at all and which with that's what we're trying to do bring in more forage for all of our animals mm-hmm. by doing that um. I think that's really it on the farm. It was pretty quiet. It's the winter. I mean, it was just like six degrees here for like a week. Yeah, um, which is abnormal for that long. Yeah, so that was kind of a challenge with the animals. Um, yeah. Which we're hoping to resolve this year. We're hoping to get some water systems set up that are frost free. Frost free. free but we freeze just free. Haven't quite got there yet. Yeah. But we made it through in six degree weather. <laughs> <laughs> no pipes burst. Yeah, thankfully. Ooh. Uh, and then, so the other update is wood turning classes. Yeah. So I'll be teaching some wood turning classes in Nashville. There's a really cool place, like a community workshop called The Forge. So if any of you guys are interested in, check it out. Definitely. They have a lot of other cool classes, mm-hmm. metal shop classes, sewing, sewing classes, classes that. I want to take one of the sewing classes. I do too. Um, Cut, making cutting boards. I mean, it's just a really cool shop, but definitely check them out. The Forge in Nashville. I think they have like art exhibits too, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, So I'll link to all this stuff in the description if you wanted to check out their page. Just, that's me. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm sitting like <laughs> Slouch, a slouch yeah. too. Sorry, we'll work on our posture <laughs> out there for everybody. Yeah. Um, just so used to slouching last night. Oh, I know, me too. And then I feel like if I sit up, I look stupid. Like, yeah, I know. Chest out. <laughs> say something in a British accent. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to move into the bulk of the podcast, which is starting a garden. How to start a garden for the first time ever. Yeah, where to start a garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if this year you're thinking you'd like to grow a garden, but you've never done it before, we're going to go through some ways you can do it. Um, and then what we think is ultimately, for most people, the easiest way. Um, but um, I guess we're going to start with the options that you have. So what are what do you think are like three of the best options for how to start a garden for the first time ever? Well, I mean, there's a lot of um, – so raised beds, that's one everybody I feel like is pretty com- – and then there's all kinds of different variations on mm-hmm. raised beds. Um, then there is just tilling. Just tilling the soil and planting into the soil. And then I think there's another option that's not really, um, I mean, it's kind of tilling adjacent, but it's just you doing it by hand, which would be double digging. Um, And I think those are the pretty good places where most people can start. Okay. Um, but each one of them has their own distinct advantages and disadvantages. Okay. But, well, let's go, let's go into that. Let's talk yeah, about. But it, for people, I think that they need to assess 
what their own unique advantage is. Okay. So, like us, we have a pretty good source of wood. So, we can build raised beds everywhere <laughs> for a fraction of what most people could. And mm-hmm. that would be, uh, and we have. And that's why we built our nursery beds, really. And yeah, so we have a relative who basically has, like, untreated boards as a waste product for their business. So, yeah. we, we get them for free. So, that that is a really big advantage that we have. So, um we have built some raised beds for trees, but why haven't we built raised beds for all our vegetables? Why haven't we done that? Yeah, I mean, basically, it's just you need so much fill. It's so much fill, really. So I mean, you're talking like a 15-inch raised bed, which mm-hmm. is which we made these. Um, that's pretty standard. Some even low. Some people like to do like 24, 30 inch. Um, so you're just like right there. Yeah. And that's a lot of material. That's a crazy amount of material. And the first obvious problem with that is, like, cost. Yeah. How much is it? You know, if you're building just one, maybe that's fine. But if you're building... A quarter acre. Yeah, or even (laughs) just three or four. Yeah. And you you have to build the bed. You have to fill the bed. Like, filling a 12 to 24-inch bed can get expensive, especially if you're trying to do it organically. Yeah. And another issue that we have is even if we, you know, wanted to spend that money on filling a raised bed, is we have yet to be able to find a good source of compost. Yeah, um, no, that ha- I mean, yeah. I mean, there's some that we can drive to. We did drive to a place one time and buy a bunch, but it just, we didn't have a trailer. We just had to buy a bunch of bags. It didn't go very far. I mean, it was far away, so we haven't found a good, close affordable source of compost we tried to buy some and it really actually killed a lot of plants in our garden so there was something wrong with it and it really put us off (laughs) from ever trying again in general so we've just been very hesitant um to bring in compost for the cost and because we're just very nervous about finding good quality compost that isn't going to introduce pesticides herbicides into our soil yeah um if you have a good source of compost or if you've just been making compost which i guess if it's the first year you're starting to garden you're probably, probably not, not yeah make compost but if you have a good source of compost i mean and you can build raised beds or purchase raised beds like it's not a it's not a bad option Mm-mm. no uh, just for us those are the two hang-ups the the fill for the raised bed right um Especially if you have asked for, I mean, quarter of an acre garden. It is big, but it's not big. Yeah. Like, if you're wanting to grow a substantial amount of food, a quarter acre garden is... Yeah, like, our goal, I guess, is to really be able to produce all of our own food. Mm -hmm. And so, a quarter of an acre, that would probably be able to do it. But that's a lot of fill and a lot of raised bed. Mm -hmm. Um, So, maybe if you're just wanting one raised bed, and we would suggest to start small. Yeah, start Um, small. You know, raised bed is not, it's not a bad option. Just make sure that you find a source of... You know, if you're worried about herbicides, pesticides, just make sure that you find a trustworthy source of compost. Yeah. Which you may or may not be able to do. I hope that you can, but. Yeah, some people may be able to. In our it. area. I ha- we haven't found it. We've struggled, so. We haven't found it. If you're out there, leave us a, <laughs> leave us a comment. Sure, sure. Um, and then so tilling. You can till. You have a neighbor that can come till up your garden spot. I, it, but. Buying a tiller is not cheap. I mean, last time we ever even looked at one, oh, I think gosh, they were three hundred dollars. Like They're probably more, ten I'm years sure they're ago. More, yeah, <laughs> ten years ago. We did have a location ten. Wow, that's crazy. Ten years ago, Chew. and and the first year we did, we did just till it up. Um, yeah. And I don't yeah. necessarily think there's anything wrong with that. Um, we we have moved into are trying to use a no-till model here yeah um so if that's important to you um you can do that and you can even still till up the garden the first year and then do i wouldn't things buy one though in subsequent personally. years to transition to no-till but yeah it, it would be hard for me if i was a first-time gardener <clears throat> unless i was just like super serious about it and wanted to till up an acre which I really wouldn't recommend. But Shoo, tilling up an acre with that, though, would still be... Yeah, I mean, I guess I would just recommend, like, 
there are people who go around into a little garden plot. That's yeah, a, yeah. That's a thing. A small tractor or something. Um, yeah. If you can get that done affordably, like, it's it's not it's not a horrible option. I don't think to it's a... start. Yeah, I don't think it's a good option to do every year if you are, you know, worried about the health of the soil, <sighs> which in turn is going to yeah. yeah. affect the health of your plants. But I think it's a fine place to start. Year one. Um, but that's, that's not our preferred option just because, once again, the cost. Yeah. Yeah. So the third option. Double digging, um, the biointensive method. I think that that's a really good place to start. Um, so what is double digging for the, the people out there who, who may not know? Like, what are the particulars of it? Yeah, well, I mean, it kind of, it fits inside of the biointensive method of Which growing. Which is outlined in a book. Yeah, How to Grow More Vegetables. Great book. John Jevons. Get that book. We've talked about it on earlier podcasts, and of course I linked to it in the show notes. Yeah, super good book. Um, but yeah, double digging is you're essentially hand tilling the soil. But I, you only really need to do it like the first year because we've kind of given up that too. It's very labor intensive. Yeah, we're not going to lie about that. It's, it's very it's labor, labor intensive. intensive. <laughs> um but you can go and loosen the soil much deeper than you can with an average tiller. I think an average tiller, you know, at most best case, you know, they say they go to 12 inches. So I kind of doubt that, really. Mm -hmm. Unless you get, like, a big tractor and, you know, do it. But, like, with this, you can actually go down to the 24 inch. I mean, you can go deeper if you want, but they don't really suggest that. And I wouldn't suggest it either. It's a lot of work. So but you can go up to 24 inches. So you're loosening the soil up to 24 inches, and yeah. what are the tools that you need to do it? Yeah, so you just really need a shovel, a garden spade, garden fork, and a sheet of plywood. Or a hard surface. I mean, I guess you could use, like, truck hood or something. <laughs> you know, I mean, a piece of plywood is just pretty accessible. You can probably get one about anywhere. So probably 50 to to $100 if you have to just go buy all this stuff? If you do, gosh, yeah. Most people have a shovel. If you're, but if you're starting. Yeah. Yeah, you, you don't have anything. Go buy it. Yeah, you don't have anything, I guess. Um, yeah, and I feel like, um, but the thing to start a garden right now, no matter what, which one of these methods that you choose, is to cover up your soil right now. Right now it's the winter. It's perfect time. Well, winter here, Florida. Mm -hmm. um, cover up your soil um, that you plan on having your garden in mm -hmm. cardboard landscape fabric billboard tarp if you got leaves just pile your leaves right into the bed that you're wanting to do cover that soil and that'll make tilling double digging or even just putting your raised bed there easier it's gonna kill it'll the soften grass. the soil yeah it'll soften kill the sod the it'll soften the soil bring worms up and they'll munch on all that goodness and even if you're like, I don't want to do a garden this spring, but I want to do one next spring, just go ahead and cover up the soil. Yeah, if you it'll can, just make just it even it better. Well, yeah, if, if that's what you're going to do, uh, cover it up and then just start building a compost pile. On top of it. On top of that, right there. And then you'd be really, really set up. Um, yeah. But you can still start this spring. Yeah, you can absolutely still start this spring. I'm just saying, like, if, if you're thinking, I can't quite catch it this year, but I want to do it next year, no matter where, you know, just – find this video in May and you are like, well, I want to start a garden. Just cover the soil for yeah. next year. Just go ahead and cover it. Yeah, or even that fall. Yep. You can plant a fall crop. But yeah, so wherever you're catching this video, just cover the soil where you're wanting to put your garden right then. I mean, at least cover it, I would say at least like a month or two. Yeah, if you're watching it right now and you want to start a <coughs> spring garden, you've got time. Yeah. It may not kill everything, and it, it may not loosen would, the soil a huge amount. But it would definitely do something. It'll move you along the way. Give you an advantage, for sure. But, yeah, I think double digging would be a really good option because it's pretty cheap. And what, if you do lay down and cover the soil for about a month or two, longer is better. It will make it a lot easier to double dig. So take us through the steps of how to double dig a bed. We don't have a video on that yet. I'll go find one and link to it in the description if you actually – want to see it yeah <clears throat> but let's just talk i'm sure you can I, you, I mean i'm sure you can find john jevin's video um mm -hmm. but the great thing about the biointensive method and double digging is that when you double dig a bed you will 
probably, you know, just say that this is your garden bed, this mm -hmm. four by two. You will cut into this one foot by two foot section, and you will remove this soil. And this will be what you start your compost pile with, um, which is kind of cool. And then the compost pile is what you then start your seeds with later. So it's a very, like, kind of holistically minded um, thing. But then you will have your sheet of plywood sitting off the side of your bed. And you will then take your next section. You will put it onto the, to the plywood. And you'll kind of chop it up. You're basically, like I said, hand tilling. But then the layer that's left in here, you're going to dig down with your fork. And you're going to just loosen it up, loosen up, fluffing it up, fluffing it up. And then put that soil back on. And then you're just going to systematically move down. Pull it off the plywood, chop it up fluff up the underlying layer the mm -hmm. underlying layer and then you'll go and you'll end up with your bed and you won't believe it because since you moved this portion of it out of there and took it to the compost pile but you'll actually end up with a mounded surface it'll sit up above the rest of the ground that you didn't do this to and that's just all the air <coughs> that you brought into the soil um, but it makes it and that, that was very helpful for us here with our very heavy clay soils. Um, a tiller would have just got bogged down, really, in our heavy clay soils. Unless, well, you couldn't put a tractor back in our garden space, but uh, it just wouldn't have even worked. They're that heavy. And so we definitely did this. Um, we did it the first year I kind of feel like we did a lighter version the second year where we just took a broad fork and fluffed up the soil um, but once you do this double digging and you loosen up the soil that deep I feel like you can kind of just move into just forking it every time you flip over the bed Every time you flip over the bed, that's confusing. So, yeah, sorry. Not f whenever, when you take one crop out, you put a new crop in, just kind of broad fork it a little bit. Just stick your fork down, wiggle. Yeah. So I after see. the first year, um, hopefully, maybe after the first or second year, but after the first year, it's designed so that you do not have to double dig again. Yeah, well, I think John Jevons, they continually do this okay um we don't okay so I it's mean, not designed to not so so it is designed so that you intermittently do have to double dig and the grow yeah. intensive but our modification is that after the first year we haven't yeah we've only returned like um like we've cut cover crops and left them on the bed like the straw from the hay that we grew um and we've added compost, and we've just planted directly into that stuff. So we did double digging the first year, and then it's just a no-till with some light forking, but no turning over no, of the soil. Yeah, no turning over the soil. After that, because we're trying to build up that soil web, the organic matter. Yeah. Um, so that's that's our modification, I guess, to make this no-till, because that's that's what we want to do. Yeah, I think I think it's what's best. I mean, even though. It's a great method, the biointensive method. It's just, it is a lot of work. And so, <laughs> and so, we're trying to figure out how to be lazy and garden, really. And, but they do get explosive amount of returns. Their I mean, yields are crazy. Yield, yeah, their yields, sorry, are just absolutely ridiculous. But their labor is really high. Mm -hmm. And so, we're trying to find really good labor in them. Uh, a nice, really, yeah. A, a nice in between. A nice in between. Really nice yields, but really low labor. Um, so, I, I, that's where I would really. I think double digging is really accessible for most people because most people can find a shovel, fork, and plywood for at least year one. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that that's where a lot of people can start. The one thing you want to make sure is watch out for any underground lines. <laughs> yeah. Water lines, power lines, uh, gas. I hit a gas line once. Oh, that's right, you did. Yeah, <laughs> that was fun. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> you live and learn. Uh, but another thing to do to start a garden right now, start your compost pile right now. Don't be just throwing, so you can save all your paper, your trash mail, your junk mail, food scraps, build you a nice little area, get some kind of like cheap chicken wire, um, start building a compost pile. That would be a great place to be started. You can even just do it in a bucket. You can start, what, what do you mean? Start like the compost pile with bucket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like those, they have those bucket spinners. You know, if you have like a small kitchen. Oh, oh, You don't oh. have a big outdoor space. Yeah, well, you don't need a big outdoor space. You can just, just, you know, two square feet. Three, I think three square feet is what. Yeah, I guess I don't like the chicken wire because it makes it hard to, stuff falls out. It makes it hard to clip. Anyways. You get the hardware cloth. <laughs> okay. Really fine mesh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That'd be better. Yeah. It's more stiff. Yeah. Anyways, just start a compost pile right now. Start a compost pile. It's not hard. Don't make it hard. Like Don't you, make it You do hard. have to like find the right ratio, but I feel like it's it's really something that you can intuit out. Like you, you'll see if it looks too wet. If it looks too wet, you need to add dries. Like it, I feel like it can be made hard, but it doesn't have to be hard. Yeah. What is it? Like 80-20? 80, 80 brown, the dry, papery, sawdust, paper, uh, wood chips. And then twenty percent of the nitrogen, the which is vegetable scraps, vegetable scrap, Green chicken poo poo, yeah, baby poo poo. <laughs> we're not, <laughs> we're not saying to put that on your vegetables. <laughs> Human or is like a whole separate, yeah, whole episode. other conversation. Um, um, but anyways, yeah, start a compost pile as soon as you can. Yeah, start with a small area. I know, like, don't do what we did. A fourth of an acre at one time. That was dumb. It's like so easy because you're like flipping through the seed catalog and you're like, I'm gonna oh. have this much. I'm gonna grow this many squash, this Look much at potatoes, these tomatoes. Oh gosh, you get so excited and then you order like you get seed blind seeds. Yeah, just start. This table is perfect. Two by four. I promise. This is it. And then you can take really good care of it. Yeah. Um, and it can be really successful, and you can be excited and motivated to. Make it bigger <laughs> next year instead of fourth of an acre. Weeds are everywhere. And then you're Things mad. are out of control. And you're just like, you just go out there with the what weed whacker and you cut it all down. Yeah. So don't uh, do that. Don't do. Just start don't small start fourth of an acre. So you can be successful. I mean, if you want to start a fourth just acre, an eighth start of an acre. fourth of an acre. But just just know that it's going to be a time investment. Yeah. Yeah. If you have the time, I guess. But golly, uh, it really can be. Of course, you can do things to like cut back on weeds. Like you, you can heavily mulch, and I would recommend that you mulch what you plant. Yeah, I mean, um, that's just like you know, let you your the mulch. let your grass grow a little bit taller than normal. Piss off your neighbor. <laughs> Don't. And piss off then you can cut it and put it on your garden bed. <laughs> Do great grass, Tyler. Don't piss off your neighbors. Yeah, just I mean, don't try to piss off your neighbors, but. I wasn't saying to a try. I was just saying. Anyways, you can let your grass grow a little bit taller than normal, and then cut it down and, and put it on your garden bed. And then yeah. you're suppressing the weeds in your garden bed with a free resource, basically. Yeah, I think something like two inches of grass clippings would be all the nitrogen that your garden would need mm-hmm. normally. I think it's something like that. It's been a long time since I looked at that. Um, okay, so I have a question. You know, people are like, don't, don't put green stuff on your garden because it's going to be breaking down and then robbing the nutrients. Well, that's what people say a lot about a lot of carbon. So don't put a lot of carbon. Carbon rich. Yeah. Okay, so the green grass shouldn't be an issue. No, I mean, it can because just putting green grass really thickly, it'll Mm -hmm. heat up in the summer. Like, it'll get really, really, really hot. So maybe just pile it up somewhere and let, let it wilt a little bit and then put it out yeah there. you can cut it and let it let it dry out and go get your drying gra- grass clippings and then go put it on okay but if you're putting it on wet yeah you'll watch it if you build it up to a certain degree you'll watch it get really hot you're making silage basically with yeah you can yeah 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 which is cool but not on your garden bed no it'll get too hot and the plants will be like oh i don't like this um what would you grow what should you grow your first year? I mean, I know everybody's like super eager to start with something 
like veggie. You know, everybody loves the tomato. Everybody loves the summer squash until you get way too many summer, summer squash. Summer squash isn't. It is easy though. It is easy. I don't like summer squash. I do. So here we are. But um, it is easy. Tomatoes, peppers, summer squash. Those are easy crops. They can be. Um, they can be. Yeah, I mean, I guess you're right. You could get tomato in we rot. Dealt a, in our area, it's very hot, very humid. We got a lot of tomato in rot um, because and we're trying not to bring in any chemicals or anything. So we had a lot of in rot. Peppers, they'll get in rot too sometimes. Um, so, yeah, I guess peppers and, e- peppers and easy. <laughs> peppers and tomatoes haven't been easy for us because our soil has been, it's just, that had been the heaviest clay soil, and then we just haven't had enough available nutrients yet. Tomatoes did really well last year. Peppers still haven't done great, um, but just I guess just depending on where you are and the quality of your soil, yeah. it's gonna. I think that would help a lot of people is like, just buy the snips from your garden store. Sure, we didn't even talk at about first. that. Like, um, maybe don't try to start seeds. At maybe first. don't try to start your seeds at first. It, it can be really, it can be exciting, but really discouraging. Yeah. <laughs> you have to like baby them every day, and then they they don't make it, or you forget to water once, and they're dead, and then it just fries a little bit. And then you have to go buy the slips anyway. But I mean, yeah, try it, try it, but don't be too hard on yourself if it doesn't work out. In your first out. year, I would just. Just go get the slips. Sure. Just go get the just slips. Just go get tomato slips or pepper, whatever, whatever you want. But I think a good balance, like in the biointensive method, is to grow like a compost crop. Um, what do you think is a compost crop? Something with like a lot of carbon to A lot compost? of carbon, yeah. It brings in some like fun pollinators. Um, so, like in the summer and the spring, you can kind of want to, if it's early enough in the spring, you can kind of plant peas. They kind of start, you can eat peas, but they're also. They bring in some cool pollinators. They're also, you know, good thing, um, kind of cover cropish. We do um, use peas as a cover crop. Winter peas. peas so we plant rye. them in the winter. Well, most people plant them in the spring. But you're suggesting like spring peas, like snap peas. Yeah. And summertime, I think a good crop that always does really well here is beans. We're in six. I mean, we kind of straddle the line between 6B and 7A. I think that's right. Um, and beans here are just like, they just take off. Golly. So that would that that's a good one. I they feel start like. to become a nuisance. In the <laughs> I mean, it gets wild. And you can also like replant them like in the middle of the summer. It seems, and they don't care. Oh yeah, we from May until August probably. Yeah. We could be so beans are a really good one May, to start with. June, July. Yeah, we can we can plant them in there. We can get green beans if we plant them in August. But yeah. And you do have to baby beans a lot less than you would tomatoes or they peppers. They don't care. Yeah, beans don't care. Um, but a good <coughs> summer crop, uh, summer cover crop would be uh, buckwheat. It's really fun, super easy. Bring a lot of bees to your garden. Um, so you would suggest, like, if you want to plant tomatoes and peppers, grow buckwheat around it? Yeah, sure. Or some other herbs, too. You know, and then even if you don't harvest it, you can just cook it and lay it back down. If you don't grow the buckwheat to fruition. Yeah, you could eat it. Buckwheat. You can, you can eat, eat the greens. You can eat the greens. Buckwheat. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then, once your first garden is kind of done, mm-hmm. I would really suggest planting a fall cover crop. You know, some rye, some winter peas, vetch, to, um, and maybe even some radishes. All together, mix all together. Because one of our big tenants is never letting the soil be bare. Never ever let it be bare. Always, I mean, you always ideally want a living root. So yeah. not even just don't be bare. You always want there to be a living root in the soil. Inside the soil. So when one thing comes out, another one immediately goes in. Yeah, or um, even beforehand. You could probably do, yeah, beforehand. So before you even completely take out your tomatoes, your peppers, your cucumbers, whatever, just throw some rye seeds down. And let them start to grow, and then whenever you're, I mean, you can just leave your tomato but don't, stuck. But don't get, like, intimidated by that. That feels a little intense. Like, yeah. don't let that stop you. You can harvest the tomatoes and peppers, and then you can plant sure. your rye. You don't have to sure. get intense about that. No. That's something you can get better at as you go on. Yeah. But try your best to, to keep a living root in the soil. It's going to help improve your soil. So another starting tip, though, is like I wouldn't start with root crops. 
Well, I mean, personally. If you're not doing a race bed, I, I wouldn't start with yeah. race with this race crops. Your soil is probably not really crops. up to the task of letting a big, nice, fat carrot or beet form. It's probably still too heavy. Probably didn't have enough. They're available at that time, so I wouldn't start with root crops. Unless you just have really amazing soil right off the get-go. <laughs> yeah, is, if you do, gosh. It's rare. But Lucky. Where are you just, at? We just had, like, super, super heavy clay. Very heavy. It's, been a, it's been a challenge, and root crops really have just now only started doing well here. Um, and that's radishes. That's still not something like a carrot. With like a really long taproot. Yeah, with a long taproot. Still does. But uh, but like there's been a, like we've been building up the soil, but also we've been building up genetics that will do well here. And yeah, so we've been that's saving our own seeds, which is which is cool, and I would suggest um, start doing that. Consider that too if you're going to do a garden this year. And we do have we have a lot of videos on our channel about seed saving, um, and it's scary. It sounds scary, I guess, but it's not hard. It's it's scared. You scared though? It's really not. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's one of those things that sounds a little bit intimidating. Yeah. Um, but it, it's really not hard. And we do have a lot of videos on, on seed saving. And if we don't, there's other yeah. videos of a lot of other people. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you should try root crops. I mean, ultimately, I think you should try what you're excited to try. Because if you don't, then you're not going to be excited about going out to the garden. I guess so. Yeah, I'm just saying... Temper your expectations. Sure, you know about root crops in your first year. Maybe mix some easy things with some things that you're just really excited to try. That way, if the excited things don't pan out, something succeeds. Something it. does. You yeah. Know? So. Yeah. Um. Um. And now would be a time to be finding some good source of seeds, some non-GMO, open pollinated, heirloom. Uh, hybrids are okay. I mean, you can go to. Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, and get seeds if, the, if that's if that's what you can do. Do that. Don't let that stop you from starting a garden. Yeah, don't let it stop. But you know, we would we would recommend heirlooms, organic, open pollinated. That's what we would recommend. Yeah. Um, uh, to do some places that I've written down: Seed Savers Exchange, Southern Exposure Seed, Quail Seeds, Resilient Seeds. Any other ones? Johnny Seeds. Mm -hmm. High mowing seeds. High mowing. I don't know about Johnny's. I think Johnny's has started to have some of that stuff, but um, okay. I know I th I know that high mowing seeds. Yeah, high mowing. So, oh, what's the other one that we've got? There's a lot. So true. So true. Mm-hmm. From North Carolina. Mm -hmm. But a big thing too is to try to find a seed company that is close to your growing area. Or look for varieties that. Um, Grow well in your that say they grow well in your conditions. Yeah. Like if it's really wet and cool, like look for varieties that have a description that say that they were grown or grow mm -hmm. well in wet mm -hmm. and cool areas. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna have to fight. And your specific style, like we don't we don't water our garden. Yeah. So don't we don't get stuff that like needs consistent watering. Um, we, <laughs> we don't water. Yeah. Well, we try to find people who are dry farming. I think. Uh, What's her name? Christy or Christina at Resilient Seeds. She has some that are just dry farms. She does not irrigate them. Which just means they get they get what they get. Yeah, from the rain. Yeah, which is uh, what we the do. The soil here. building up the soil and, yeah. and rain. Uh, and I would really suggest so try to find somebody who's close to what you're envisioning. Someone's close to your climate, and you may not be able to find both. Maybe get some from one and get some from the other. Yeah, and this we're like throwing a lot at you, but like the overarching message is just do the best that you can until you can do better. Don't let like not being able to hit all these dots prevent you from just starting a garden. Just start. Yeah, um, and all this other stuff will will fall in place, but just just start. You know, that's like the most important thing. I think. Yeah, just start. You're gonna you know mess up. A, you're gonna mess up a bunch. We definitely messed up a bunch. Oh. So just be prepared for that. Oh, just. yeah. What it was some, I heard some funny story. It's, there was this guy who, you know, PhD. I can't remember. And he was asking this really experienced gardener, you know, like, you know, how, how long will it take for me to, like, get really good at gardening? And the guy was like, 10 years. He's like, yeah, but I, I'm, I'm really smart. Like, there is, like, a whole house, and there's, like, a gnat that's fine. <laughs> you could 
could go anywhere in the house. I'm sorry. Uh, keep, keep doing your story. How long will it take for him? Yeah, to and he was like, "Yeah, but I'm, I'm I'm a pretty smart guy. I I think I can, you know, learn fast." He's like, "Okay, great. Ten years." And he's like, "But really, ten years?" He's I like, have a PhD. Yeah, I got a PhD. And he is a smart guy. I think it was Chris Martinson. I think who was saying this to it. Mm-hmm. And he is a smart. Golly. Um. But yeah, because one, one year you're going to have no rain. One year you're going to have too much rain. One year you're going to have crazy winds. We had that one. Uh, every season is different. And you're going to, one year you're going to have a crazy raccoon. Well, we think it's a raccoon. Over knock over corn. all your corn <laughs> and eat all your corn. Uh, so there's going to be something. Just unexpected stuff, basically. So you just can't. Corn worms. Tomatoes, cut worms. And uh, we've eventually. Well, that's not the point of the story, sorry. Um, <laughs> the point is, like, unexpected stuff is You're going to mess up. And you're just going to have to learn from it and move on the next year. Like, one year, your tomatoes might not do well. The next year, they might do great. It just, it just happens. Because so many unexpected things will happen in the garden because nature is involved and pretty unpredictable. Yeah. But what I was going to say about the hornworms is we oh. did have a serious hornworm problem. Oh. But then we ended up, um, we like let lots of areas of our yard just like grow up tall. And because of that, I feel like we have a lot of things blooming and we get a lot of pollinators. Like we've seen so oh, many yeah. crazy wasp varieties that bees. I've like never I've seen I've never before. seen so many different wasp and bees in the past few. Yeah, sorry. So we were able to, like, I guess, attract this wasp that, like, lays eggs in the hornworms. Oh, it's wild. Um, and basically the eggs hatch out and kill the hornworm, which sucks for the worm. But the hornworms will just, like, devastate and destroy your tomatoes. We, we kind of had a problem last year, a little bit. For It, it, it happened early on in the season. Mm-hmm. But we had so many tomatoes. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I guess what I'm saying is, like, there's just going to be ebbs and flows in natural cycles. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, one year you may have aphids that destroy your peas, but the next year, like we did, you'll have maybe a shit ton of ladybugs show Crazy up. Crazy amount. And eat all the aphids. And frogs. So, yeah, and frogs. So you just have to... Just realize that not every vegetable is going to be perfect every year. Um, stuff's going to happen. Yeah. So where else? So we, we kind of said start. Start where you have the advantage. Mm-hmm. Cover your soil. We think double digging is 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 the most approachable way. Most approachable for most people. Unless you have like a pacemaker or something, I think your heart rate. It's really intensive. <laughs> it's like very intensive. Um, it, you may not even want to completely double dig the bed in yeah. one in one day. You may want to yeah. do half of it and come back and do the other half, um, or even do it in four sections. It's it's really intensive, so just be prepared for that. And don't don't say we didn't warn you. Be looking for seed companies. Oh yeah. And find some local or method, similar method to how you want to garden. Uh, find seeds that check those boxes. Yeah. What else? Anything else we forget starting a garden? I'm okay. sure we did, but I can't remember anything else. <sighs> yeah, it's hard to go back to the beginning. You should decide what you're going to do about water. I think you should have a game plan. Do you want to try and um, not water? Or yeah. are you going to water every week? Um, because I think if you have that that decision and that like goal within yourself, because you may go out and your plants may look wilty and you're going to break down <laughs> and water them, <laughs> unless you've already decided not to. Um, so just I guess just have your water plan like, laid out you, are you just going to turn on the tap and water them once a week um are you going to try to collect rainwater and use only rainwater so just just think about water i would say yeah what you're we're pretty water like wise. hard on our plants yeah because we're trying to save seeds that are going to like thrive and like um only if we are in like severe droughtish times we don't really i mean we have like summer but we don't live in like these places that have two year droughts. <laughs> yeah, 
But like, we might have to do something different, but we don't live there. Like, yeah, it'll so go for like a month without rain. In here. severe times, we would still only water a portion of them just to make sure we have something that survives. To say it's be fine. But we still want to see if other ones can push through and make it. Mm-hmm. So just decide like where you're gonna get your water from. I guess so that's another thought point. What else? I we can't good? really think of yeah. anything else. Start. Start a garden. Yeah, that's that's the main takeaway. Don't don't be scared. Don't don't feel like you have to have everything figured out because you, you won't. just won't. You never will. Golly. Can't wait for that. Can't wait for what? So you have everything figured out. You're never gonna have everything. Oh, figured I thought you were saying you personally can't I can't wait for it. No, 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 like, no. you can't wait till you have everything yeah, figured out. For sure. Okay, so that's it for me. That's it. Start a garden. Thank you guys for tuning in to this episode. I'll link to everything that we talked about in the description. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. We appreciate you all watching. Thank you. See ya. Bye.